All right, so today we're looking at this paper called Magistral from Mistral AI, which introduces their first reasoning model trained with reinforcement learning. This is essentially their response to models like OpenAI's O1 and DeepSeq's R1, where the idea is to train language models to do longer chain of thought reasoning before giving you the final answer. The main story here is that Mistral decided to build their own RL infrastructure from scratch rather than using existing implementations or distilling from other reasoning models. And they claim this pure RL approach maintains most of the original model's capabilities while significantly boosting reasoning performance. They're releasing two models, Magistral Medium, which is trained with pure RL on top of Mistral Medium 3 and Magistral Small, which they open source under Apache 2.0 license. For their training data, they focus exclusively on problems with verifiable solutions, mathematical problems with numerical answers, and coding problems with test cases. They start with around 700,000 math samples, but apply extensive filtering to get down to just 38,000 high-quality problems at the right difficulty level. The filtering process is actually quite clever. They use a two-stage approach where they first filter with Mistral Large 2, then train a small RL model on that filtered data and use that stronger model to refilter the original dataset. This prevents them from discarding genuinely difficult problems that the weaker initial model couldn't solve. Now, let's get into the meat of their approach. They use something called GRPO which stands for Group Relative Policy Optimization instead of the more standard PPO, which was first used to train reasoning large language models by DeepSeq R1. The key idea with GRPO is that instead of having a separate critic model to estimate value functions, you generate multiple completions for each prompt and use the average reward within that group as your baseline for advantage calculation. But they don't just use vanilla GRPO, they make several modifications that are quite important. First, they completely eliminate the KL divergence penalty, arguing that in GRPO, the policy diverges substantially anyway, and maintaining a reference model copy is computationally wasteful. They also normalize the loss by the total length of all generations in a group to avoid length biases. One of their more important modifications is what they call relaxing the trust region's upper bound using the clip higher strategy. In standard PPO, the clipping prevents low probability tokens from increasing too much, but this can hinder exploration of rare but important reasoning paths. So they increase the upper clipping threshold to something between 0.26 and 0.28, which allows more exploration while keeping training stable. Their reward structure is quite straightforward, but well designed. They evaluate generations on four axes, formatting, correctness, length penalty, and language consistency. For formatting, they require responses to be wrapped in think tags and have proper mathematical or code formatting. Correctness gives 0.9 additional reward for correct answers, and they use a soft length penalty to signal when the model is approaching the maximum completion length. The language consistency part is particularly nice. They translated 10% of their English problems into French, Spanish, Italian, German, Chinese, and Russian, and they give an additional 0.1 reward if the classifier detects that the problem, reasoning, and answer are all in the same language. This simple approach enables the model to follow the user's language with minimal code switching. Their infrastructure setup is also quite complex. They use a distributed system with three types of workers. Trainers that maintain model weights and do gradient updates. Generators that perform rollouts using the latest policy. And verifiers that evaluate completions. The key challenge they solve is handling the heterogeneous completion times. Some sequences can take five times longer than others. Rather than waiting for all sequences to complete before updating, they operate generators continuously at maximum throughput and constantly gather groups, verify them, and update trainers. When trainers get new weights, they broadcast them to generators via NCCL without discarding in-flight sequences, 
which means sequences can experience multiple weight updates during generation, but the latest tokens are always generated on policy. Looking at their main results, Magistral Medium trained with pure RL shows impressive gains, nearly 50% increase on AMI24 from 26.8% to 73.6% pass at 1, and they reach 90% accuracy with majority voting. When compared to DeepSeek's approach, they actually perform quite competitively, which is notable since DeepSeek had the advantage of reasoning supervised fine-tuning before RL. For Magistral Small, they find that the combination of supervised fine-tuning followed by RL gives the best performance, but somewhat surprisingly, they show that pure RL on the smaller 24B model can achieve performance similar to just doing supervised fine-tuning on traces from the larger model. This contradicts some previous findings that suggested smaller models couldn't benefit much from pure RL. Their multilingual results show that the model performs about 4-10% to lower on translated versions of AMI compared to English, which corresponds to about 1-3 to three questions difference. This degradation is roughly similar to the base model, so the multilingual constraint doesn't seem to hurt too much. One of the more interesting analysis sections involves a PCA study of how the model weights evolve during RL training. They project the weight trajectory onto a 2D plane and find there's essentially a length direction where increasing completion length correlates with higher rewards up to the point where length penalty kicks in. Perhaps the most surprising finding is that RL training on text-only data actually improves multimodal reasoning capabilities. They see notable improvements on MMMU, MMMU Pro, and other vision language benchmarks, with the model transferring its extended thinking process to visual reasoning tasks. They also share some approaches that didn't work, which I appreciate. For coding problems, they tried proportional rewards based on the fraction of test passed rather than binary pass fail, but this led to slightly worse performance and slower length growth, probably because partial rewards provide false signals to incorrect solutions. In an interesting experiment, they also tried fine-tuning on open-source reasoning datasets like OpenThoughts and OpenR1 before applying RL, and found that RL still provides substantial gains on top of the supervised fine-tuning baseline, achieving performance comparable to DeepSeq R1. Now, looking at this work critically, there are several strong points, but also some limitations. The infrastructure work and the detailed ablations are quite valuable contributions to the field, and their finding that pure RL can work well even on smaller models is important. The multimodal transfer results are genuinely surprising and worth investigating further. However, I'm a bit skeptical of some of the comparisons since different groups use different base models and training procedures, making direct comparisons tricky. The fact that they need such extensive data filtering to get from 700,000 to 38,000 samples suggests that the approach might be quite sensitive to data quality, which could limit its applicability. Also, while they show that RL preserves capabilities, we don't have a comprehensive evaluation of potential degradation in other areas. Overall though, this seems like solid work that advances our understanding of how to train reasoning models at scale, and the open sourcing of Magistral Small will certainly be valuable for the research community.